The brain is the most complex part of the human body, and it is our job to keep it as healthy as possible for as long as possible. Joining us today is Dr. He Heather Boger, a professor with the Neuroscience Department at MUSC. Dr. Boger, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now, whether we like it or not, the brain is going to age. What does the normal brain aging look like through a lifespan? Yeah, so we all age. That fountain of youth, youth has not been found yet, and the brain undergoes normal changes. There is some slight decline in our memory function. We may not be able to remember people's names or certain events that took place in our lives, but that's just all a part of normal aging. And there is slight atrophy or decline in brain tissue, but again, we all experience that type of decline. Recently, I've been hearing a lot about accelerated brain aging. What is the difference between the two? Yeah, so accelerated brain aging is really the term we use, especially when we're going out and talking to the community. That's indicative of things like Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's, anything in which the cell is, I mean, the brain itself is aging at a more rapid rate, where we have a greater loss of cells functioning over time. And that's what we're seeing in these neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease. Is there anything, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, sex and, you know, genetics plays a, a big part in accelerated brain aging, but what about the things that we take part in on a day-to-day -day basis? Is there anything that we should refrain from doing that is a sign of accelerated brain aging? There is, and so we, we have a classification. We have what we consider modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable risk factors. And of course, age being that number one non-modifiable risk, risk factors as, long as, as well as genetics. But there are other things that contribute to the accelerated aging, or let's put it this way, increases a person's risk of having accelerated aging, such as things like uncontrolled diabetes or uncontrolled hypertension, um, poor diet. I mean, that's very common for us down here in the South, unfortunately. But all of these things will contribute and do contribute to an increasing a person's risk for accelerated aging. And those are things we can control. I mean, there are great medications that exist to help us control um, diabetes as well as um, high blood pressure, but we also can change up what we eat to try to help our brains age more appropriately. Dr. Boger, are there any you know, superfoods that you recommend <laughs> for people to work out their brain and, and to get it as healthy as they can? Yeah, you ask my students, the one thing they remember about me is that I always preach to them about eating blueberries. I, that's one example I always use when I talk about nutrition and aging. Um, because of the amount of antioxidants that it has. And when they graduate, that's the one thing they remember. Dr. Boger, I ate my blueberries. Um, but uh, the Mediterranean diet seems to be the, the norm diet right now, or the best diet to really help with brain aging as well as whole body aging. I think that's important because really anything we eat is gonna impact other organ system, systems, not just the brain. And so the Mediterranean diet is based off a more plant-based diet, so a lot of leafy greens greens, a lot of veg fruits and vegetables that are darker in hue in their coloring because they have higher amounts of antioxidants or anti-inflammatory molecules to help our bodies um, age more appropriately. And, and really those diets, you want to stay away from a lot of, re a lot of red meats um, and stuff like that that would have more toxic type chemicals in them. Is there any way for us to catch the early signs of accelerated brain aging? I think, you know, when we think about accelerated brain aging, any type of small changes you or even your caregiver or your loved ones, those that are around you most, are really going to pick up on those things sooner. And, and when you do notice these things, it is important just to go for an annual checkup with your primary care or seek the consult of a neurologist and just kind of keeping track of these things over time. Obviously, if you have a, fam a family um, history of any type of neurodegenerative disorder, that's gonna be a trigger that you probably should do follow-ups. But if you're forgetting small things like, where are my keys repeatedly, uh, forgetting those types of things, those are kind of little triggers you wanna keep documentation of and, and really follow up with your physician on. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, hopefully this brings awareness to brain aging, and I feel like more recently it's came to the surface how important it is that we need to take care of not only our physical, but also what's going on up in here. So, Dr. Boger, I want to thank you so much again for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely, and we are back in two minutes.